iMovie is a free editing software that comes with every Mac. So if you have a Mac laptop or an iMac like I have here, you already have iMovie. I'll show you how to get it from the App Store if for some reason you deleted yours. It's also available for free for iPads and iPhones, but I will cover those in upcoming videos. Right now, I wanna focus on iMovie for Mac for beginners. Now, I've been editing professionally for 15 years, but iMovie was one of the first editing apps that I ever used, and it's still very powerful and relevant, and in my opinion, one of the best ways to get started editing any video. So, I will cover step-by-step step on how to get started with iMovie, and in this video, by the time you're finished with it, you should be able to edit any video project if you're new to editing. Now, if you like my teaching style and you wanna take your iMovie knowledge and editing knowledge to the next level, I do have a full training covering iMovie that will take you from beginner to advanced. Literally everything there is to know in iMovie and editing is covered in that training. I will link that below. Right now, let's jump in and learn iMovie step by step. Just to make sure you have the latest version of iMovie, you could go to the App Store, which is just this icon here on your Finder window, and you could search for iMovie in the search bar. Again, you most likely have this if you're on a Mac. This is not available for Windows, by the way. And make sure you update yours here if you don't have it or install it if it's for some reason not installed. Let's go ahead and open it up. And when you first open up iMovie, this is going to be your homepage and this is where you'll create a new project from this plus sign. So yours won't have any recent projects, but your recent projects, if you wanna come back to work on a previous project will appear over here over time. Now on top of your page, there's this other media tab that for the most part, I think you should ignore for now till you get more advanced, but a media tab is a place where you could import all kinds of different videos and audio files and images and then work from here. But I usually just prefer to ignore that and just work from the projects panel. So I would recommend you do the same, go to projects and press create new. Here you'll see two different options. There is movies and there is trailers. For the most part, we're going to work with movies. This is where you will create your video project and edit it. Trailers are these templates that let you create a template. I do have a different video on YouTube covering that that I will link below, but let's go ahead and click movies. Now here inside of iMovie, let me just show you around for a second and then we'll go ahead for step two and import media. But this is basically where all your media is going to go. It's this panel where this arrow is on. This is gonna be your preview window. And on the bottom over here where it says drag and drop a video, this is what's called a timeline. Basically your editing is going to take place down here on a timeline. And here project media, this is the name of your project here. So to get started, we need to import media. That's the very first step after opening a project. I'll press this arrow. Now media is basically photos, videos, sounds, anything you wanna use in your edit, you need to import into iMovie. And you could basically, if you have an SD card or a CF card, any kind of memory card, you could use this. This one actually came directly from my camera. So if you have these type of cameras that will record on that, you will plug that into your computer. You could also plug in your phone. I just plugged this phone and I'll show you, you could import video from what you've shot with your phone or iPad too. I'm gonna do that in this case actually. So as you could see, my phone showed up over here. I could click it. I could even use FaceTime HD camera and even record clips from a connected camera like the built-in FaceTime camera, but I'll choose my phone. And as you could see, it's gonna show the duration of any clip that I have on my phone already. And if I want to import any one of these, I could just select that clip and then press import selected. So that's one way to bring things from your phone. Another way is if you have like an SD card, like I showed you, or in this case, I have things on my computer I downloaded, I could select all these and let me hold down shift and I'll make sure all of them are selected and I'll press import. Now, all my footage, these are things I shot on my phone in the iPhone cinematic mode here. But from here, if I wanted to import even more, I could press this arrow and it will bring back the same box where I could bring in more anytime throughout my whole editing process. Step three is we need to bring any footage we have here to our edit, which is down here, onto the timeline. So let me show you a shortcut to make this much easier. What you wanna do is if you scrub with your mouse, if you just go from left to right here, you could look at your whole clip here and right on top is gonna show you how long that clip is, eight seconds in this case. If I wanna start here, 
I could press I, you see this little line that got created? And then I could go through and let's say I wanna end this clip here, I could press O. So I creates what's called an in point, and then O creates what's called an out point. And then if you press E on your keyboard, it will take the in point and the out point, basically just the yellow part here, and bring it down here to your edited timeline. That's one of the fastest ways you could edit a project. So what I typically do is this was my first clip. I'll go to the second clip and I'll do the same thing. I wanna start this here. I'll press I to start it here. If you don't press I, it basically just starts it from the beginning. But then I want to end it here, go to the fish, press O and then press E. So you can see it's added a second clip. So now if I come down here, if I start and go from one clip to another clip, that's basically how my edit is going to go. So what I recommend is you go through all your clips, do the same thing, find where you want the video to start, that clip to start. I'll press I, I'll come down to where I want it to end, I'll press O, and then I'll press E. Let's say you want the entire clip. Instead of pressing I, O, or E, I could just drag it and bring it down here as well. So that's another way to add it to your timeline. Okay, for step four, now that you've added all your clips that you imported into your timeline, maybe you wanna change the order of your clips. So let me actually reduce the size of this timeline. The slider lets you see things a little bit more broadly. So these are the five clips I've added so far. But let's say I decided to change the order of clips. Maybe this clip shouldn't be followed by this clip and I'll use this clip instead. You just grab it, bring it between the two and drop it right there. And now it will go from this clip to this clip and then to the shark clip that way. You could change the order of any clip the same exact way. If you want this to be the end, you'll bring it here, just put them in between and it will do the job just like that. If you want to bring something back from what you've imported, I'll press I, O, and this time I'll just grab it and put it in between these two. So that's another way you could add a clip after you've actually started editing already. You could always go back to media and bring things in between at the end or even in the beginning and it will push the rest forward. Now number five is sometimes you wanna trim your clip, meaning maybe you did want to start this clip a little bit later, maybe right over here instead of where it starts already. So to do that, you just have to come in the beginning of a clip like this, get these arrows and then drag it over. And it's gonna cut as soon as I see where I wanna start, like here, I'll let go. And just like that, it's made that edit for me. And now if I go over here and if I click, spacebar is another useful keyboard shortcut that lets you play. You could also press play over here too. But in this case, I'll press spacebar to preview. Okay, that's great. That's the way I wanted that trim to go. So if you wanna trim any clip, you could make clips shorter by sliding in. You could also make them longer by sliding out. You could do this only with the beginning and the end of any clip you have if you wanted to change the duration of that clip. But sometimes you may wanna take something out in the middle of a clip. It's not in the beginning or the end. You wanna take out this like middle section here. Let me grab this 10 second clip. I'll just bring it down at the end here. And let's say I want to take out the middle part of the clip. I wanna leave the beginning and the end. This is perfect for when you're talking, for example, and you messed up in the middle of your conversation and you wanna take the middle part out. You could click over here and you could split a clip. Now to do that, there's a keyboard shortcut. Press Command and B, like blade, and it will cut the clip like that. And I'll come over here where I wanna cut again, Command B, and it will cut it again. Now I could select the middle part and just press delete, and it will bring these two together. So Command B will split the clip into two. You could press it again to split the clip again, and then you could select the middle part and then press delete if you want to make an edit in the middle of a clip. So at this point, I will take my time and I will do my best to tell a complete story, change the orders, make my trims here. And then when I'm happy with the order of my story, I will start working with other elements. In this case, a lot of times I wanna add an image to my project. So to add an image, there's a couple ways you could go about it. You could go to the photos library and it will pull up things from your photos library on your computer. Or you could just press import 
and actually import something from your computer as well. So I'll need to find a picture first I wanna use, and I usually use this website called Envato Elements that I'll link below, but this is a subscription platform where you get royalty-free photos and music and video templates and stock video. So I get pretty much everything I ever use in an edit from this platform to make sure there's no copyright issues. So let's say I want a shark here as a photo to add, and I could grab this and press download, then I'll bring it to my project. So here, I downloaded this to my desktop, I'll select it here and import this image. So again, all imported things show up over here. Videos don't have any icon, they show the duration, but photos will just have this photo icon. I could just grab this image and I could bring it to my project. If I wanna use it at the end, I could put it at the end. You could see it gave it a little bit of motion here, which I will show you how to change in a second. But I do want to start my projects with this, so I'll bring this image in the beginning. You could also put images on top of your video like this, and it will basically go from a video clip to that image and then back to a video clip. So that's a cool way to cover up a video. If you are talking about an image, for example, in the background, maybe this is you talking, but you don't want to show yourself talking, so you put that image on top. In this case, I'll bring it back and put it in the beginning of this project. Now, the reason why this is moving and it's not stationary is because in iMovie, when you add an image, it adds this kind of effect to it. You could see this cropping effect. If I click on it, it's doing this thing called the Ken Burns effect. It's basically a slow kind of animation on your picture. You can remove it though. So I could press fit instead of Ken Burn. And now if I go back over here in the beginning and press play, it's completely stationary and then it will go to that. So in this case, I'll leave it completely stationary. And if you wanted to make this longer, again, you could just take the end of it and stretch it out. Once I'm happy with my videos and the images that I chose, I typically like to add music to my video. Now, this video already has some sound from my iPhone. Sometimes I have sound where I'm talking as well and the music needs to be background music. So I'll show you those if you want the music to be dominant or just lower level as background. If you come up to this audio tab over here, you could actually get music from here. So if you have GarageBand installed, for example, there are some things in GarageBand you could use. You may have sound effects already from iMovie and you may have some music already. Again, I got these from Envato Elements for the most part that I'm gonna use in this project. You can also, from just a media tab, import music from here. So I'll just do that here just to show you. You could import from here. Now I'll use the sound clip from Envato. I'll press import. And music files look like this in your media tab, but you could grab these and put them on this bottom layer. They don't go on the video layer. They'll have to go on their audio layer underneath that. So you could see this is my music. So if I start from the beginning now and press play, you're going to hear music as well. I'll just have it down on low here. Now I'll show you how to change audio levels in this next step. So you could adjust the volume of music or really any audio. You could just grab these lines. It's at 100%. If I go low, it could be become background. If I'm at 20%, it's going to be very subtle, kind of playing in the background. And the audio from the clip is actually going to be more dominant. So if you're talking through your clip, for example, it makes sense for this to be at a lower level or not use music at all. If you want music, like if it's a music video or like a birthday party kind of a video or a slideshow, the music should be at 100%. You never really wanna bring it all the way up because if it starts showing you these red areas, that means it's going to get distorted. Now you could see this is going way further out than my entire video. So I'll have to select it and press Command B. Remember that's the split tool. And then I could select the second part and just press delete. So now the audio ends at the same time as my video. Now the next step, I typically like to fade out my audio or my music. So it will gradually get lower in volume till it's over. You could do it in the beginning too. Just grab this thing and bring it in. You will have a fade in and a nice fade out you would want to do that with music all the time. And if you wanna change the audio of the clip that you're working with, you could lower that too. So you could see, let's say, I don't wanna hear the sound of this turtle swimming, I'll bring that all the way down to zero. And now I won't hear anything from this clip, I will just hear the music instead. 
That's very useful here. You could always right click on a clip as well. And there's a way where you could actually separate your audio from the video if you wanted to do that. It's called detach audio. Let me show you what it looks like. If you detach the audio, it will bring it as its own little audio clip down here that is not connected to the video. So if I wanted to use this audio somewhere else, now I could actually move it around. It's not connected to this video clip and I could just delete it entirely. And now this little clip has no audio whatsoever and the music is going to be what's playing instead. So I'll press play. Yeah, that's what I want to happen in this case. Five more things I wanna show you to really take this edit to the next level that are a little bit more advanced, but I think you'll find them useful and then we'll wrap up the video. So number 12 is transitions. Once I usually finish my edits, work with my audio, add music, I usually like to add transitions. So let me show you a transition. Right now, if I start this clip here, I'm actually gonna put it on mute here for a second. I'll press space bar. Right there, that's called a cut, when it just goes from one clip to another clip. That's basically when there's no transition between clips. Professionally, when I make videos, cuts are fine. In movies, for example, it's usually a shot that cuts to another shot, and there's no type of transition in between. But in the middle of two clips, you could add a transition. So to do that, if you come over here to transition, this tab, you could see there's a ton of different transitions and cross dissolve, one of the most popular types of transition, which takes one clip and dissolves slowly into another, could be used in between clips. I'll drag it, let it go. Let me show you what a dissolve looks like now. I'll press play. Very cool, very useful in this situation. I love cross blur as well. Let me just replace this one instead. Press play here. That's very nice. And then fade to black or fade to white is also really useful. I'll add it between these two clips. Let's go over here, press play. That's very nice as well. And there's this thing called titles. Let me show you what a title does. A lot of times when you start a project, let's say a home video for a birthday party, even a YouTube video, it's nice to start with a text title. So you could grab one of these. I'll throw it on top over here actually and I'm gonna stretch out the length to make it the same as this picture. You could see this adds a title to your project, right? So I could actually edit that. I'm gonna double click on it, on the text. You could see this text is highlighted. I could change the font, the size, and iMovie Tutorial is the name of my project here, so I could just type that out. And if you wanted to change anything regarding size, you could go ahead and do that on your own or just use the default here. Another way to use titles is I'm gonna grab it and put it in the beginning of my project where there's no pictures and nothing happening. So titles could be on top of your video or your image and titles could just be on their own just like the one you see here. Again, with any of them, you could double click over here and change them as you like. So think of title as your opener and as just regular text too. Next, let me show you this icon that comes in really handy is for recording voiceover. So if you press this icon over here, you get this whole settings. So let me click the settings gear and it will show you a input source. So I use a external microphone. I use this one, Shure MV7. I'll link a more affordable one in the description that I've used for a long time called a Blue Yeti mic, which is a USB mic. You would select your input source like this and then you wanna mute the project while you're recording. You would just go over here, wherever you wanna start. Let's say you wanna start the voice over here. You would just press record and you could see right now, anything I'm saying is going to get recorded. And if you look down here, it actually automatically lowered the volume of the music for me and added the voiceover as sort of another track. It did not overwrite my music, it just lowered the music this is my voice over here. It says VO right here. And I could play with the level of it too. You can see the level is really low because my microphone was actually too far away for this shot. But that's how you record voiceover. That's this tab. I use it all the time if I'm demonstrating something on camera, for example. Now, I wanna quickly show you some of these other options that you see over here. On top, you'll have a bunch more effects that I'm gonna briefly explain. Again, if you wanna learn all about iMovie, all of these things in full detail is included in my course, but 
The first thing I like is this one called Color Balance. If you select the clip, you could go to Color Balance. And if I open it up, you could do all kinds of different things with Color Balance. Auto is useful. It will correct the exposure and the color, all kinds of things with your picture. You could also white balance and match colors that are more advanced. There's this option as well where you could do all kinds of things. Let me just show you. You could make things black and white. You could make things really vibrant and saturated. You can make things cooler or warmer with this slider. And you could do all kinds of more things with contrast and exposure with this filter over here, which could get really, really interesting. The Ken Burns or the cropping option I already showed you, but this comes in really, really handy if you wanted to add a little bit of animation. Let me select the video clip to show you this option. This option lets you stabilize shaky video. So if your video is shaky, you could check that on and it will do its best to analyze it and really make it more stable. You have this option over here for lowering volumes of clips, but I usually do that down here with what I showed you previously. This option reduces background noise for sound, so that could be handy if you have a noisy clip. You also have speed if you wanna make things faster or slower, it's really that simple. I could make this faster, for example. He added this little rabbit here, so if I press play, this video is now playing at twice the speed. This is filters, so you have a ton of different filters like this to choose from. If you wanted to give a different look to your video, like these black and whites, film noir, things like that. And information will just give you some information about your clip over here. Anytime you could press reset if you made a mistake. This one will just automatically try to improve the quality of the clip using all these options at the same time automatically. So if you don't care about the details on these, just press this, see if your video is better or worse, and then you could change your mind if you don't like the result. Now, once you're done with your project, you have to export it out of iMovie, right? You wanna post it somewhere, you wanna share it with someone, maybe put it on YouTube, let me show you how to do that. That's this option right here, this export option or share, press that. And the most common way to do this is by exporting your file. That's what I click on almost all the time. Let me press export file, and let me walk you through these settings here. You could add a description, this doesn't go anywhere, so I won't add anything here. You could add a tag, again, I won't add anything here. Format, you could do audio only if you're doing a podcast maybe, but video and audio is what I choose almost always. Resolution, in my case, this video was shot on my iPhone at 1080, so that's the only option I have. Sometimes you'll have a 4K option if you have video that was in 4K to start with. Quality, I usually leave this on high, Best is this ProRes format, that's a huge file. In almost every case, high is good enough. So I wouldn't choose ProRes, and I wouldn't choose these lower options either. Now, compress, if you're in a rush, faster is fine, but I really always care about quality more, so I will choose that. And if you worry about file size, let's say you don't have a lot of space on your computer, look over here, and you could reduce this by changing the quality. So if I go to medium, it's just going to be smaller. Now, if I go to ProRes, just to show you, look how much bigger it gets. Almost got seven times bigger than the high quality. So that's why typically if you're going on the web, high is just perfect. Then it's gonna show you the duration of the clip over here too. And then I could press next. It will let you pick a place to save it. Here is where you could save it with a different name. So iMovie tutorial, press save. This icon over here is showing you that there's an export in progress. So you could let this just finish up and it will show up on your desktop. In the meantime, by the way, you could always return to your project panel and that will actually ask you finally to save your project. So you can name your project, iMovie Tutorial, I'll press OK. And now my project is saved, this showed up over here. Anytime I wanna make changes or make any kind of adjustments, I could just click over here to open up the project again and all my edits are down here and I could make any changes I want. Now, the export is done. This is my file. I could preview it by pressing spacebar. Again, I have it on mute right now. And I could basically just scrub through to see all my edits here to make sure everything is good. And if I decide to post this somewhere, I always have this MP4 video file that could be added to YouTube or shared with anybody else. And that's your crash course on using iMovie. Again, if you wanna take your knowledge with iMovie to the next level, make sure you check out the link below to the full course. And all the resources I talked about are linked below as well, including the microphone and the place where I get all my assets like video and photos. 
If you found this useful, share it with anyone that wants to learn the basics of editing. And I hope to catch you on the next video. Thanks so much for your time.